All right, I think I'm live. I'm trying to get this as close to the other one as possible, but we'll see. Good morning, it's Friday. It doesn't really feel like Friday, does it? Because we've been kind of, well, if you're like me, I've been kind of off a little bit. Um, trying to celebrate the end of our first full year as coaches. And I'm gonna be going back and forth between this camera, which is Livy Girl Success Boutique, and this camera, which is Girl's Guide. So, don't wanna let anyone out. My hair's a little funky, but you know, the gray hair, they get a little wiry, don't they? All right, ladies, you're not here for that. Hi, Karen. Let me see who's else is on. Okay. So, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or a Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrated recently. Hi, Daphne. And, um, what are your New Year's Eve plans? What are your New Year's Eve plans? I don't have any. Hi, Trina. My husband, let me put that down. Okay, let me know, Daphne, if you can hear me. And Donna, can you hear me? Because I just put my phone down. Let me know if you can hear me with a thumbs up over here on Girl's Guide. I think you can. Yeah, you should be able to hear me. Okay. So, yes, excellent, thank you. You know, Gandhi said, action expresses priorities. Action expresses priorities. So I was just thinking about what actions I've taken, not only in the last year as a coach, a real estate coach for women, but when I was an agent, what actions did I take? And I thought, you know what? This just looks too funny, too weird. I am going to... Let me make this look a little better. I am going to share with you some of the, what I, in my heart, feel were the most important things I did as an agent that got me to multiple, multiple six figures. So I was never without leads, ever, as an agent for well over a decade, never without leads, after three months, I'll say that. Yeah, hi, Margie. Hi, Elizabeth. Um, after the first three months, I was never without leads. I always had leads coming in. So I'm going to share uh, a little bit about that with you. And I was never more than two weeks in between commission checks. And it's interesting because I would always hear about people who were saving up their commission checks for a rainy day when they were thinking that they might not get a check. And I'm like, I've never had that. I've never had that. And first of all, I give God all the glory. Let's just say that, because what am I? I mean, I'm just a person. But, um, but you know, as we start a new year, I thought in a new year is an opportunity for a fresh start. Because quite frankly, ladies, I don't care if you made $5,000 as an agent in 2018, 500000 or somewhere in between. Because every year is a fresh start. Every year is an opportunity to have a clean slate. Because whatever happened that didn't work last year, I see as a learning experience. So you know... Maybe I need to tweak that, right? Maybe I just need to tweak it. Not necessarily that it's wrong, just that you might need to tweak it. So today I'm, today I'm gonna share what, what I believe attributes to the fact that I had that success and I had a number one team that I sold and I was a number one agent in my market, okay? So I'm gonna pull that out. Um, Let's see what I have here. I want to make sure. So you can do whatever you want to do. As Gandhi said, action expresses your priorities. And too many times worrying about how you look to others gets in the way. And here's what I mean by that. So I'm going to, I'm going to share with you Three things that I believe attributed to the fact that I never ran out of leads, 
I never got worried about leads. And I was never more than two weeks in between checks, ever, ever. And I think it might've even been less than that, okay? So um, let's talk about some of the things that I did. So back in 2007, I joined Zillow. And back then, I'm going to say that I was the first or second in my market to ever join Zillow. And I'm going to say that I was probably one of the first 500 in the country to be on Zillow. I could be wrong. But I remember when I went to my broker in 2007 and I told him that I had joined Zillow as a premier agent. He said, why are you going to spend money for leads? And he pretty much shamed me. And I'm not a man basher. I have three sons, two biological and a son-in-law who I love like a son. Um, I love my husband, loved my dad. I'm not a man basher. But that man tried to shame me. I didn't last there long, as you can imagine. I guess what I'm saying to you ladies is that I didn't give a crap what he said. Because even back then, I had this perspective. It's my business. I'm going to do what I want, and it felt right to me. Do you know why? Because I believe, and I learned in corporate, that you're either going to pay in time and or money. That's all we got right? Time and money. And I thought, if I can pay for a lead, man, I'll close it. Because I was a salesperson my whole life. So I knew that I would have a good closing ratio or whatever. So before you knew it, within six months, I was whoop, closing deals. And my broker at the time said, hey, Jan, I guess I have egg on my face. I go, yeah, I guess you do. Within three months, I left that brokerage. And you want to know what happened when I left? <laughs> and maybe his agents are on here. I didn't really see everybody that's on here. Um, next thing you know, I think that as soon as I left, he told all of his agents to become a Zillow agent because they all did. And it was pretty funny. So the moral of that story, ladies, is do what you want to do. Do what feels right to you. I knew that I could close them, and I didn't feel like knocking on doors. I've never done that. I mean, the only time I really knocked on doors is when I was helping a team member farm and when I was looking for a home in a particular neighborhood for a buyer. Then I would knock on doors to see if anybody wanted to sell. All right? Um, then this actually happened before I became a Zillow agent. Uh, I was actually still in training actually. And the agent that I was with, um, showed a foreclosure home. And I said, gosh, don't you want to be a foreclosure agent? And she laughed and she's like, Jan, you're so cute. Of course I do. But it, it's hard and you're never going to be able to do it. Well, it was a Wells Fargo home. I researched, I got on the list, and I was approved. So moral of the story number two. If it seems difficult or impossible, it's not. It's not. Isn't that awesome? It's not impossible. Because I live my life believing that nothing is impossible. Not one thing. Not one thing. And I didn't come from money, by the way. I did not. My father was a factory worker, and he worked two factory jobs to support six kids. So I don't know where this comes from. I thank God for it. Because I have some in my family who are very depressed, and I don't get that. And I thank God that I don't get that. But I witnessed it my whole life with my mother. Um, so I totally appreciate it, meaning I um, 
That's one of the reasons I became a coach just for women because we have our own issues. We have our own fears. Okay. You know, in 2011, how many years ago is that now? We're coming upon 2019. So eight years ago, do you know what I got the idea to do? I had a woman lender. Surprise, I had a woman lender. And I said, let's do a video series. Let's go around neighborhoods and um, let's do videos. And we did. And we were called Girls Around Town. And so we got a little music and, you know, we say, I, I forget exactly what it was, but if Karine is on here, she can write in what, what we actually said. But um, it was something, 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 girls around town, girls around Winchester. And it was really, really fun. Now, did I get a specific deal because of those videos, ladies? No. But the thing about being a, uh, an agent is that we layer our marketing. We layer it because one get seen and then one gets seen and then something else gets seen. That's why you need to have a really clear marketing plan that includes online and offline. And then that's when the magic really happens. But remember in 2011, I was on Facebook since 2008, but it wasn't what it is now. It was, it was pretty difficult. And, um, it's kind of neat that we were four forethoughters, you know, because she and I had lunch and I came up with this idea and she agreed. I want to share with you ladies that what I'm talking about is being fearless, being unstoppable. Listen, when I started as an agent, I knew sales, but I didn't know the area. I had just moved there mm, six months before, so I didn't know the area. But I just knew, and if you remember my story, we were over 90000 in credit card debt, plus two car payments, plus a mortgage. Um, I didn't know the area, and I didn't care. I was going to be successful. Failure was not an option for me. People started saying, gosh, Jan, did you, do you have a marketing background? Why? Because every, you're everywhere. Just you're everywhere. Just you're everywhere. And these are other agents saying that. Then, two, oh my gosh, almost three years ago, I got the idea to bring my couch, which I got rid of now, but anyway, bring my couch to downtown. Because I thought, wow, the juxtaposition of my neat ivory couch downtown amongst all the brick. How awesome would that be? And how about the whole team wears white? And how about in addition to the agents on my team that I make my team look even bigger with my photographer, my marketer, because I had a, a marketer, my reception or my assistant, um, and two lenders. How about that? And while we're taking this photo shoot, how about if we bring along wrapped Christmas gifts in our brand colors. And how about we have a festival that's always pink and green, so how about we do that and, and have little pink and green stuff that we're gonna um, use in May during our festival. My, I'm having a cramp, so I'm kind of trying to pull my toe here. Anyway, um, and how about if we have pumpkins so that we can you know, and how about we have hearts so that what I'm talking about, ladies, is so that we could take pictures that one day and it would last. And it actually lasted for two years. Because who's going to remember when I put up, the, the, you know, the Christmas picture, um, I did it for two years in a row. And it was just really different. It was really different. And speaking of teams, I had the first team in my market. And I don't even remember what year that was. Maybe 2010, 2009. Now, mind you, my former market was a secondary market, meaning it was in Manhattan, it wasn't DC, okay? We were about an hour to DC. And we were in the mountains. And people would call me a city slicker. City slicker. So there had been teams over the mountain. For many years, 
but there weren't any in my market. So what am I saying, ladies? First of all, be a trailblazer. Be a trailblazer. Do you know what Helen Keller said? Where is that now? Helen Keller. This is really cool, ladies. Helen Keller was blind, and this is what she said. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Is that, do you love that? I love that. I've always had an affinity for, for um, Helen Keller. I don't know why. I wasn't really like a straight A student. I was in college, but not in high school. So I don't really know her full story. I just know she was blind and I don't really know what else. But isn't that horrible? I'm not really that book smart. But I really respect her. I also really respect Mother Teresa. Um, somebody who gave everything away to help others is something I can get her, my hands around. I respect Mother Teresa. But when Helen Keller says life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all, I want to encourage you and ask you ladies, when you look back on your 2018, did you include adventure in your business? Did you have any adventure in your life? And the reason I ask that is because I think it's really important that we live. You know what I mean? Like, if we got a stage four, not that I can do for you, cancer diagnosis today, what would we do? If we knew we had six months to live, what would we do? I think we'd be more adventurous. I think we would try to seize and get everything we can out of life, right? Ladies, one of the reasons I became a coach for you, women agents, is because I saw my mother exist. She existed. She lived in fear. There was no adventure. Her biggest adventure was going to the grocery store or out to dinner. That was her biggest adventure. And I just don't want that for you. I don't want that for anyone, especially women, because we give and we give and we give to our kids and we give to our grandkids and our nieces and our sisters and our mothers, right? I remember when I was in that sandwich generation, my parents are both deceased now, but I remember how hard it was when I had kids in middle school and high school and I was a realtor and my mom was sick and my dad was sick and we had to keep going to the hospital and it was three hours away. It was hard to be adventurous, but I forced my husband and our family to do things that were kind of different. And I think that helped my business is my point, ladies. Okay? Because when we are too business and all we do is when we're with our kids, feel guilty. And then when we're with our business, we feel guilty because we're not with the kids. How many, how many, how many are living that life? It's not good. So let's listen to Helen Keller and let's make adventure, build it into our schedule. You know, I had off from Christmas Eve until yesterday. And one of the things that I did was I went to my calendar and I planned when family was going to do stuff because my baby's going to be 19 soon. So he has his own life, and I have to plan these kind of things. And you might say, um, I thought you were going to explain to me how to make a quarter million dollars. What is this? Everything counts, ladies. Everything counts. Everything counts. So what else? I'm asking you to stop looking around. Please stop looking around. At what everybody else is doing because it, it's not gonna work for you anyway in 2012 I started a Facebook group for one of the members of my team in a neighborhood and didn't set the world on fire but it was action and it was imperfect action that kind of started a momentum if you will it started a momentum for me and for that agent. Complacency is deadening. And so right now, as we're sitting at the cusp of a brand new year, 
What are you going to do? What action are you going to take? Because we know Gandhi said action expresses priorities. What are your priorities? I have a small group of ladies in our Unstoppable Inner Circle. It is a 12-month coaching program that is closed, so I'm not trying to get you involved in it. But one of the first things I had them do as their homework was to grab their calendar and time block personal time. I'm not a nail lady, but many are. So I said, time block getting your nails done. Time block getting your hair done. Time block getting a massage, whatever you enjoy. Because if we don't do that, next thing you know, we'll turn around and five years passed and we were all about work and not about enjoying life. Right? So, um... Let me see. Hold on one second. <laughs> so there's three steps to making a quarter million dollars a year that I want to share with you. Okay. First of all, you, I just talked about it. You want to take chances in life without fear. Take chances without fear. Now, if you know me, I have some panic disorder. Um, mostly manifests in driving long distances. But for some reason, I just don't fear business. I, I don't, I, it's just something that I won't entertain. I won't entertain it. And when something comes up, I'm like, no, no. And I, I definitely invest in my business in terms of personal development and growth, coaching. It's fun. I love being coached. Sorry, just moving here. I love being coached as much as I love coaching. So it's pretty cool. You gotta take chances and not worry about what other people think or say. Hey, many times my husband would say, Jan, don't do that. When I told my husband that I needed to hire a mover to take our couch downtown, he was pissed. He goes, what? This is our couch. I don't want this thing downtown. I go, he goes, that's, that's weird. Everybody's gonna think that's weird. I said, no, they won't. They're gonna love it. And they did. So take chances. All right. Secondarily, see yourself as a business owner, not self-employed. That's huge. You might be like, well, wait, I am self-employed. What's the difference? Ladies, this is a business. And you might not ever have been in corporate or had the... Um, I guess, like, because I was in corporate, I saw how, you know, CEOs, you know, what the, how they made decisions and things like that. And one of the things that um, I saw was that they invested in the business. Um, and so many people, not just women, by the way, are very short-sighted with respect to investing in their business. And so they get the cheapest signs that don't hold up. They have to be replaced. Um, they don't do coaching. They will buy the Louis Vuitton handbag. They'll buy the Mercedes or Volvo because they have to look the part. But they won't do training or coaching. But yet we know, right, ladies? Do we know this? That if we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep getting the same results, right? And when I was an agent and I was coached, I knew what I liked from that coach and I knew what I didn't like from that coach. And my coach was a man at first and he totally didn't get me, which was my first inkling of saying, he's nice, but... He didn't get me. So here's step number two is to, as you're considering what to invest in, maybe a CRM website, which we have an amazing one, Living Girl website. Um, is it a depreciation or is it an appreciation? Meaning, is it going to help you make money like Zillow, like coaching? Or is it going to depreciate like a car, 
a Louis Vuitton handbag. Believe me, I want a Louis Vuitton, but not enough at this point <laughs> to, to do the investment. All right, number three is to take action every day. Take action, live life. Take action, live life, live life. We don't know when our number's up. And I have to say that most of my coaching clients express fear in some way. And it is disheartening to me. It really is sad to me um, because I have fear, but I take action in spite of the fear. And one of the things that I do in my coaching business with my clients, whether they be group coaching, one-on-one, -on -one, or in the unstoppable inner circle, is that I wanna encourage them, and I do. And I'm available, I'm available to you. Here's my phone number, 540, area code, 931-5050. I mean, the other day I got a video text from someone I didn't even know, and she said, um, Hey, you know, I've been watching your videos and um, I've been having this issue. Can we talk? And we talked yesterday and it was awesome. And so I am a resource for you, not just my clients. I am a resource for you. And I'm making noise because do you guys know what this is? Remember this? Don't break the ice. We were playing that. And I'm sitting on the floor here. Anyway, all right. So... We have, I have two things to talk about. We have group coaching starting in January. And I'm just going to ask you, what are you doing? What is your action? What action are you going to take? Because, you know, when I started doing, in, in spite of fear, when I got clear on who my brand was and who I was and who I wanted to be, and who I wanted my team to be. First of all, creating a team. If you want to create a team, I mean, I had the number one team in my market and I sold it for a good amount of money, right? And that will allow you to scale. And you hear a lot about this word scale because then it's not just you having deals, it's you training little yous, you know, and I just had all women and I poured into them. And then when they would have a deal, I would have a deal. Meaning, when they got a commission check, I got a commission check. And it wasn't from a selfish place. Believe me, they all made six figures, okay? It was a beautiful thing, right? And that's what I want for you. And I want 2019 to be an amazing year for you. And let me tell you something. If you don't start in January, you get behind in momentum and it's very hard to catch up. But when you get started in January, it really builds a momentum. Lori Patch, we've posted her testimonial, video testimonial here, look for it, in Girl's Guide and in Livy Girl Success Boutique. This time last year, she joined our group coaching and she had had a horrible year the year before and she was so off track and just so down and she was in the business for over two decades. Oh my gosh, watch the video. In fact, maybe I'll post it if I can on here. I'm not very savvy on this, on this but um, you got to hear. She's from Washington State. She had a great year and she started with group coaching with us in January of this year. Um, Myra Rodriguez um, from my old stomping ground. Myra, I don't know if you're on here. She came to our listening intensive at the shore, at the beach in New Jersey. She's tearing it up. Man, she's tearing it up. So proud of her. Sharon Smoot from Georgia joined our group coaching last January. She was having a hard time, very hard time. By June of this year, she was in the top 10% from, I don't know how far down she was. I don't know if she was bottom 10%. But she had made more by April 1st in 2018 than she had made the entire year of 2017 as a result of being in our coaching. 
that excites me. It's why I get up. It's why I'm so excited for 2019 because we've helped, I think it's, the number is 157 women, and that includes group coaching, listing intensive, and one-on-one. -on -one. And we want to help you. We want to help you. And so, in this, um, in the description, when I hit finish and this thing goes um, in the in the queue, you will see a link to a Google form that will open the door for you to have a strategy session with me personally. With me, it's my sincere pleasure. It's my honor. It's my passion. And here's my promise to you. I promise that you will leave that call with two actionable strategies that you're going to feel comfortable with moving forward. You're going to be excited about it. So if you want to sign up for group coaching as a result of hearing it, let's go. I'll tell you how to do it. If you just want to talk to me and you just want to get some strategies for free, no obligation, let's do it. Let's do it. It's my way of giving back and sharing my expertise, which is why I became a coach for women agents in the first place. And ladies, I want to share with you one more thing. And Kimberly Ann Reeves wants to build a team. Boy, would I love to um, help you do that. We're having the most incredible, like I'm ready. To, I wish I could do a back handspring, but I can't. I can't even do a cartwheel anymore, but let me get up here. Oh, my aching bones. Listen, we have April 9 and 10 earmarked for the She's Unstoppable Live conference. Just for you, just for you, just for you, woman agent, just for you. It is April 9 and 10. And so it's, it's two days. We start at 8 a.m. on the 9th, so you want to come the 8th and spend the night or get up early and come on the 9th down in near Dulles, Virginia, near Dulles Airport. We made it very convenient to um, transportation, okay? And we have the best speakers, and we have so much for you. Go to She's Unstoppable Live.com. She's Unstoppable Live.com. But I'm going to tell you something. We have shopping with really cool stuff that you want to... Um, even just what we used to call window shop. You don't have to buy anything. Absolutely not. But it's just fun, right? Girls time. We're going to have cocktail reception with a signature drink that is pink and delicious. And we're excited for that. And we have the Forbes announced. Richest self-made woman in real estate as our keynote. The richest self-made real estate woman in the world. It's the CEO of Douglas Elliman. It is none other, none other than Dottie Herman. Dottie Herman had a life of tragedy growing up. She lost her mother at a very young age. Sad. She was the oldest, so she had to take care of her younger brothers and sisters because her father wasn't really around much. So, you know, some people would get bitter from that. Um, she had a child very young. She was a single mom, very young. And now she's on Forbes. She is the Forbes richest woman, I'm sorry, richest self-made woman in real estate. I think, let's see, who thinks we can learn something from her? Absolutely. We can learn something from her. And I'll tell you, she's amazing. And if you upgrade your ticket to VIP access, we'll have a meet and greet with her. Okay? How's that? And who likes Million Dollar Listing LA? Who likes Million Dollar Listing LA? I'm obsessed with Bravo Million Dollar Listing Series. Me... Well, God is good yet again because we have Douglas Elliman's Tracy Tudor Maltis who is going to be at our conference and again, upgrade your ticket to VIP status 
so that you can really maximize your conference experience and you get to have a meet and greet with a movie star, with a TV star. She's pretty awesome. I've talked to her. She's amazing. And Donna never heard of it. Turn on Bravo Network. Um, it starts January 3rd and it's called Million Dollar Listing LA. She's and I'm not, I don't used to say this, but she's the bomb. Like, she's gorgeous. She's a single mom now. And we can learn a lot from her. And she is a special guest. And we, if you also upgrade your ticket to VIP status, we are going to um, include you um, on the Powerhouse Panel Mastermind Breakfast on the 10th. How awesome is that? Do you want access to agents who are making 500000 a year and more? right? You want to have access to people who are doing what you're trying to do. And I just couldn't be more thrilled. You know, social media is the way things are going. So we have two speakers that are going to share the best. What, what my sister Jeannie and I are, are saying to these speakers is, look, we don't want fluff. They can get fluff on those little silly webinars. How many silly webinars? Um, work less and make more. I, I don't believe that. Nonsense. But bring a fat notebook to the She's Unstoppable Live conference. It's going to be amazing. She's Unstoppable Live.com. So, in wrapping up, there were the three things that I did that took me from making $100,000 a year to making 250, 4, 5, 6, and up. Okay? Number one, see yourself as a business owner, not a self employed. You're a business owner and you need to make business decisions that contribute to your revenue as opposed to, you know, that appreciate your business as opposed to depreciate your business. Okay? Number one. Number two, take chances in your business and do what is you. Do what is your brand. Figure out what your brand is. That's what we do in group coaching. We help you figure all this out. Take chances no matter what anybody else, else thinks. And thirdly, take action in spite of. Take action daily in spite of the naysayers, the people who don't understand. You got to take action, ladies. If you're overwhelmed and not sure what to do, but you're ready to make 2019 your fresh start, then... When I hit finish, you're going to see, or you might already see in the description of this post, a link. That link is to a free strategy session application. And you get time with me, 20 to 30 minutes with me, where I promise you're going to leave with two actionable strategies that will fit your personality and fit your brand. I promise you that. And if you want to move forward with group coaching, awesome. would love to have you so that we can get you the awesome results that we've gotten for others. And if not, hey, that's fine. I always like meeting new ladies. And then lastly, I definitely want to see you at She's Unstoppable Live. Ladies, She's Unstoppable Live price goes up on January 1st. You want to get in, and you want to upgrade to VIP status, and look on the website with everything you get for that. It's a lot. Well, I think that's it. I wish you a very happy, happy new year, and I hope to see you in April at the She's Unstoppable Live conference, and I want to have a free strategy session with you. So fill out the application, and let's get going. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.